Hey everyone, it's Natalie. I know it's been going on two weeks since I've done my last video. Um, I've just been super busy. I've been dealing with my neck issues. I had to have an epidural and stuff and um, uh, my clients. So I just haven't had time. Uh, today we're going to talk about when uh, you're cutting off toxic people in your life and um, this goes towards family members when you're cutting off narcissistic family members uh, and what to expect so um, I found this on psychcentral.com and I'm gonna read um, it's six tips for cutting off contact with narcissistic family members hold on let me see if I can all right family has the ability to frustrate us like no one else can. But what can you do when the family you were born into is not only frustrating, but cruel, condescending, and downright abusive? We all have our limits, and if you were raised in a household where abuse and mental illness was part of everyday life for you, your willingness to tolerate your family's bad behavior may be higher than most people. But sooner or later, many adult children of narcissistic families realize that they don't have, want to put up with the abuse anymore. And that's when many decide that the only way they can live a normal, healthy life is to cut themselves out from their family's destructive behaviors. Psychologists refer to this as going no contact, as the name means just that. It means that you no longer speak to email or have any contact with those family members who have hurt you and we make it clear to them that you would prefer it if they don't contact you either if you are seriously considering going no contact with your family or already have here are a few things to watch out for number one don't assume that they will respect your decision if your family were capable of respecting your boundaries, you wouldn't have to resort to going no contact. However, they don't see it that way. They see it see you as an extension of themselves, and the idea that you may want something different to them is impossible for them to grasp. Also, beware the narcissist love tra trampling. Be also, beware that the narcissist loves trampling boundaries. Even if you tell them firmly but politely that you don't want them to contact you, be prepared for them to call you up constantly, asking why you won't speak to them. When it comes to respecting other people's boundaries, they just don't get it, and they just don't care. Number two, be prepared for all-out smear cam campaign. Your narcissistic family probably has been managing smear campaigns campaigns about you behind your back for years but once you go no contact the gloves will come off even if you have done nothing wrong you may find yourself being accused of things you've never said or did by relatives you thought relatives you thought were on your side this is a common tactic used by narcissistic um or i'm sorry this is a common tactic used by narcissists to discredit their victim after years of suffering emotional and psychological abuse at the hands of your narcissistic family, should you dare to speak out about it, they will go into damage control and do everything they can to re rewrite the family's history. Before your very eyes, they will have cast themselves as the Brady Bunch and you also as Wednesday Adams. So let me speak on that. They're going to smear you. Um, the best thing to do is stay silent. So they're, they're going to go to people because they have to tell people why you have stepped out of the family and they're going to go tell all, all these family members, horrible things, things that are inappropriate. And the true family members that have already seen the narcissist will not believe them. Matter of fact, those people will come out of the woodwork to support you. So the people that are manipulated by the narcissist uh, will turn on you. They'll try, they uh, turn into flying monkeys. They will try to get information out of you. They will get you to try, try to uh, get you to speak ill or badly of the family member or members. Um, 
And this is all a tactic by the narcissist to discredit you. And so they can turn around and say, see, we're the Brady Bunch. She's Wednesday Adams. Uh, she's, she's a horrible person. She's the one that disrupted the family all this time. When these flying monkeys um, don't know the real reason um, of why you walked away and went no contact with your family. And that is because they don't see the abuse happening. It is a hidden secret in the family dynamic, especially when it comes to a scapegoat. Okay, so uh, they're, they're not there to witness the abuse. So when the narcissist goes around smearing your name in a smear campaign, they believe the narcissist. When the truth of the reality is, any smart person who really sits there and thinks about why somebody walked away from their mother, father, brother, sister, or whoever in your family, um, a smart person would say, oh, well, there must be something going on here, some type of abuse going on here, or something that I don't know about that is causing this family member to actually want to walk away from his family. So this other family member that's walking away must have been abused. A smart person would get that. A man, someone that is manipulated by um, the narcissist doesn't get that because they're still under the control of the narcissist. They're still uh, believing the narcissistic, uh, narcissist manipulation where other family members who don't believe it uh, they're the smartest out of all of us. They've never tolerated it for one minute, and they've seen it clearly since day one. So, okay, let's go on. Three, beware flying monkeys. When it becomes apparent that badgering you to contact them and uh, assisting your care, or assassinating, sorry, let me read that over. Beware of flying monkeys. When it becomes apparent that badgering you to contact them and assassinating your character to everyone they can think of hasn't got them what they want, they will call in the flying monkeys. Psychologists use this term to refer to the people your family recruits to try to guilt you into reassuming contact with them. The flying monkey may be a sibling or a family friend or other family members. They may initially sympathize with you, but you get the feeling they are not really interested in hearing your version, your voice of events. The flying monkeys can be relentless in trying to get you to see what you're doing, what you're doing to your poor parents. Regardless of whether they've realized it, the flying monkey is being used as a pawn to do your family's bidding. Because the narcissist doesn't apologize. So what the narcissist does is they go and send these flying monkeys out to come back to them to tell them how you feel. Because they can't come and, and say, oh, I apologize, you know, for this or that. That's why you're going no contact because they've never apologized. So, so they're using these people to find out how you feel. Because... You aren't in contact with them, so they don't really know how you feel, even though they do. They know how you feel. They've treated you like this all these years. Four, be, I just shake my head at this because when it comes to flying monkeys, they have no clue what they're, they've gotten themselves into. Uh, and you lose family members over this very fact. And it's very important when these flying monkeys come out of the woodwork that you stay silent. That if they are coming and badgering you about um, whatever the sore subject is, uh, the best thing you can do is stay silent. That is the way to win. That is the way to get under a narcissist skin. Is you, when the flying monkey comes and they're saying this and that, trying to get information, you say, that's too bad they feel that way. I wish it was different. Sorry they feel that way. That's all you say if you say anything. You don't say nothing. And you cut contact with these flying monkeys. Because the real people that are on your side will tell you everything that the narcissist has done to them and you and what they've witnessed. And they will, they will be on your side. And you will get that feeling. A flying monkey comes in and makes you feel guilty. Makes you feel bad. When they don't even know what's going on. 
Number four, be firm and don't give in if you know that nothing has really changed. Once you have made up your mind to go no contact, you will endure every narcissistic trick in the book. They will try to make you feel guilty. They will deny your feelings. They do a lot more. They will send you pleading emails, begging you to contact them. They will do a very good impression of behaving like an emotionally healthy family if they think it will make you change your mind. They're magicians. I always call them magicians. The one thing they won't do, however, is taking an honest look at themselves and their behavior, meaning they will never reflect on their self. They do not think they're at fault. They will never apologize. They do not care uh, how you're feeling. They are, they are getting supply from your negative feelings, okay? They actually, they, ha they get better supply out of you being hurt than you being happy. So that's why I am telling you, when you're trying to defeat a narcissist, live your best life life because when you are happy and you are living your best life you are defeating the narcissist they are not getting supply from you they only really get the main supply from your negative thoughts from your negative feelings from how uh, hurt you are so you never let a narcissist know how you feel you stay silent five surround yourself with a good support network going no contact can be one of the hardest things for anyone to do it's even harder if you have to do it without any emotional support. It's essential to have people in your life who understand what you get, have gone through and support you 100%. These are not the flying monkeys, guys. These are people that, no matter what, have your back. They are there for you, okay? I don't know if this camera is sitting right, but... I've noticed like in most of my videos, I've been looking down. It looks like my eyes are half shut. So I'm trying to look up straighter because I'm just using my cell phone. Um, okay, so make sure you surround yourself with people that support you 100%. Talk to, under, talk to understanding friends about it. Join a support group for adult children of narcissistic parents or start one of your very own. And be careful who you tell. People who haven't been raised by a narcissist may see your decision as a cruel or overreaction. You don't need to deal with others' judgments of you, particularly if they can't relate personally to what you have experienced. So this, you know, you've got to surround yourself with people that are with you 100%. Don't think that the flying monkeys that come around are going to change their mind and turn around and be on your side. It's not going to happen, guys. So you might end up losing a cousin or an aunt or a nephew or a niece or your brother or your sister. Because these people are still blinded by the abuse. Okay? So one of my clients that I work with, he has dealt with this his whole life. And he has started his own group. So, he is very careful of who he lets in his group, and he goes to meetings, and he goes to support networks, and he has the support that he needs to get him through uh, his life on a po positive path. So, he does not contact these people that have hurt him. He's in very little contact with them, okay? So, if you need to start your own support group, way to go. Do it. It's freeing. It makes you feel good. It 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 uh, motivates you to stay no contact. To have other people come into your group saying, "I've I'm going through the same thing that you're going through. Um, can I be part of your group? Can we discuss this and that?" And then sooner or later, you're like my my one of my clients who has thirty people in his group, and everybody's relating stories to each other. They're all empathic people, and they're all sitting here talking about what they've went through in life or the people they've encountered in that day and how not to act negatively towards that person, but to say, mm, oh, oh, well, who cares type of attitude. Six, be kind to yourself. It makes uh, it may take years for you to heal from having spent your life dealing with narcissistic family members. You'll have days when you hardly think about it and other days when you are so filled with rage you can barely speak. 
but the longer you are away, uh, away from them, the better the chances of your family having a healthy, chaos-free life. Don't ever let anyone make you feel guilty about that. So, yeah, so listen, you're, you're probably suffering with PTSD. I mean, more than likely, you're suffering with PTSD. So it's like a hamster wheel in your head. And so some days, I mean, at first, your hamster wheel is really going to be revved up and it's all you can think about and all you can research and, and uh, you're going to be angry and people are smearing you and it's going to be terribly hard to stay silent. Um, but if, you're, if you want to truly beat a narcissist at their own game, you don't react. You don't smear them. You stay silent. You don't tell them how you feel. You don't write emails to them expressing how bad they've hurt you. You don't let them know how you feel. That is the number one thing you need to get in your head. So even with this hamster wheel and you feeling like you're losing your mind, trust me when I say this, it will go away. It takes time, but it takes you to actually go within yourself and start healing. Um, if you're not healing, then that hamster wheel is just going to stay there. So you have to find support networks or find channels like mine or other people's channels on YouTube um, and try to um, start healing. So if you can start healing... Oh, my God, my dog. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. If you can start healing... I'm sorry, guys. Henry, one second. So, okay, so I'm so sorry about that. You know, every video, Henry is me messing with me. He's my handicapped dog. So, uh, if you can start healing, and, and what you're doing right now is you're healing, okay, by finding my channel, by finding other people's channels and stuff like that. So, eventually, it's going to take a few months, but eventually, all that talking in the mirror and talking to yourself and thinking about it nonstop and not being able to sleep and uh, standing in the shower arguing with yourself or arguing with yourself throughout the day, uh, trying to make yourself feel like you're in the right, that will eventually diminish, okay? Um, and over time, when that starts to diminish, you realize that you start healing, that you're healing because you're no longer having this hamster wheel. So that means that you're healing. Now you'll probably always have PTSD or CPTSD um, uh, for a while. You're gonna have it for a while, but the thing is, is when it's really revved, revved up, it really does feel like there's a hamster wheel in your head. So when it starts revving down, you know you're starting to heal. And when you have healed completely, that PTSD or CPTSD is not gonna be there anymore, okay? And uh, let me read this one thing too. So, when you're leaving uh, your family and going no contact, uh, it feels like uh, you were never able to speak the truth. And uh, you were not able to have normal feelings. But by walking away from the abuse, your voice was finally heard by them loud and clear. Through your silence, they all finally heard the words you have been telling, trying to speak for so long. So you're saying no more abuse, not tolerating this anymore, guys. And by your silence, you are you are sticking up for yourself. You might it may not seem like you're sticking up for yourself because you're staying silent, but silence kills. I mean, that's a true statement. So trust me, stay silent when you're going no contact. Do not let these family members or friends or whoever know how you feel. You don't put poems on social media. You don't let you don't write stuff on social media. You try not to even talk about them. Because when you're posting stuff on sh social media about your feelings, you're letting everybody know in that narcissistic dynamic that you're hurt. And you telling people that you're hurt is giving them the best supply they've ever had in their life. Ever. And when these family members turn around and say, oh, I'm going to change this and that. And even if you do get an apology, it's all a lie. None of it's true. So don't think for one minute if somebody gives you a sob story about they're stressed out or this and that when they've been doing it for years that they're going to change. Because there's a difference between somebody who is stressed out and they blow up on you once in a while and then the people that have been doing this to you since your child, childhood. So there's a huge difference. So if they come and give you a sob story, 
you don't listen. You don't respond because you need to block their phone number. You need to block their email. You need to block them on social media. If they end up contacting you, you don't respond. You stay silent. You don't owe anybody an explanation because those narcissistic family members or friends already know what they have done to you. They are not dumb. They know what they've done. Don't you think for one minute that they don't know how much they've manipulated you and how much they've acted self-righteous and how much your feelings didn't matter and how much you're like how much of everything that that makes you a person internally and emotionally and psychologically does not matter to them, guys. They they know what they've done. They have treated like treated you like your inner being has not mattered for years. That's why you're finally standing up and going no contact. Okay. I put up with it for 20 years. And it wasn't even for my own family. And this is how I could compare what was a normal family dynamic to a toxic family dy dynamic. Because my family was not toxic like that. My family uh, talks about their emotions and problems. And if somebody hurts somebody else's feelings, they will come and talk to them until they're blue in the face and they will apologize till they're blue in the face until the situation is fixed. A toxic family member or mem uh, uh, dynamic, they don't speak about anything. So if somebody gets hurt, somebody throws somebody else under the bus, somebody else, whatever the situation is, they literally don't talk about it. It's so bizarre. So the other person is left sitting there feeling like they're hurt, they're not respected, their opinions and decisions don't matter, their emotions don't matter, um, their truth doesn't matter. And, you know, when they're sitting there feeling like that, they expect their mother or father to come and talk to them. But that's not what happens. It gets shoved under the rug until you have a mountain sitting in your living room. And when that mountain reaches its peak, that's when you're going no contact because you just can't shove any more, um, any more disrespect underneath that rug any longer. Uh, you may even find yourself under the rug yourself because they belittle you. They manipulate you into thinking that you are worthless, that your opinions and decisions and all that don't matter. Because they truly believe that. They only think they're righteous. They only think that their feelings and their emotions matter. So if you hurt their feelings or their emotions, oh, it's the end of the world. But they do that to you on a daily basis and they never think about you for one instant. That is toxic. If not for one instance, do they care that they have hurt you or manipulated you? But yet turn around and when someone does it to them, it's the end of the world and those people are so cruel. That is toxic. That is somebody who is a narcissist. They could even be psychopathic. So don't believe into, into anything a flying monkey comes and says when they say, oh, well, your mom's sorry. She, she wants to start the relationship with you. She, she's sending you letters in the mail. She's sending you birthday cards and Christmas cards in the mail. You know what? When our narcissist does that, we throw them in the trash before we even read them. Because she's been sending cards to my husband's corporate address because she doesn't have our address. And we don't even open them. We throw them in the, the trash. My husband will get them and say, look, I got a card. He tears it up and throws it in the trash. Sometimes he doesn't tear it up. He just, he doesn't put that much effort. Or we, we'll send it back. Return to sender. Um, we don't tolerate any of that. Uh, we don't care what family members have. We've had to drop, uh, two, two family members because they have backed up our, our narcissist 100% and started acting bizarre around us and trying, um, like talking to us in a way they've never talked to us again, like trying to get, um, information out of us when they've never been like that before when, when the narcissist didn't smear us. And so, um... We had to cut ties with those people. Even those people try to get our address. So bizarre. They tried to get my home address, okay, to give to the narcissist. So now she's sending letters to the corporate office in Wisconsin to my husband. 
And uh, so my husband said he's decided that he's going to have to tell his parents, please don't get my work involved with your toxicity. Uh, because th in a way that's a threat. She's like, I know where you work. You want to stay silent forever? Oh, well, I know where you work. But see what she doesn't know is we've already talked to his work about it. They know. And matter of fact, because our, our uh, company is so great to us. They have gathered around us and supported us and call us. And they are our new family. We have a wonderful company. Um, and they literally took us underneath their wings. And now uh, we see what respect and opinions are when it comes to us. Because they let us speak our truth. So she can sit there and try whatever she wants when it comes to our job. But our job already knows. And they think it's pitiful. Because she's pitiful. So you don't you don't bend for those people. You're finally free. If you want to win, you live your best life, guys. You live the best life you can live. And you don't think about those people. When you have uh, when you have completely defeated a narcissist, that means you no longer have emotions or feelings or guilt towards those people. That you no longer care. That they have hurt you so bad that you no longer care what those people have to say or think about you. That's when you have defeated a narcissist. When you're trying to win against one, you're staying silent. You're going no contact. You're um, not letting anybody know how you feel that's how to win but when you've defeated one that's when you have no more emotions or uh no more tolerance for that behavior you no longer care about that person that they have pushed you past the edge and now you're sitting here saying i don't give a damn about that person like those people can go if they died tomorrow i wouldn't go to their funeral that's how you know you've defeated a narcissist. Anyways, it's 27 minutes long, guys. Haven't been on here in a few days, so I thought I'd stop by and say hi. Business is going great. Like I always say, I give a free 30-minute consultation. Last month, I was promoting one free session. Um, uh, that has passed. Um, so, I um, wanted to say that if you do need help, I will leave my email in the descriptions below the video and you can reach out to me by email and uh, I will give you a 30 minute free consultation and then I will give you my pricing, which um, I do, I'm not an hourly rate life coach. I am a per session. So if that means you need to speak for four hours, it's a one time rate um, and Trust me, it's a lot lower than most life coaches hourly rate because I love what I'm doing. I'm trying to help you, but if I have to step out of my work and talk to somebody and I'm missing work, then I just find it fair that um, I get some type of donation or something like that because um, some days I have to miss work completely to go talk to a client. And uh, if I'm missing work, I'm missing money. And I do have a family and a son. Uh, but I also will take donations if you cannot do our uh per session rating rates, uh, donations are welcome too. I'm willing to work with whoever um, financial wise. It could be a dollar in donations if you need help reach out. I'm here for you. I do this because I love doing this. I'm not doing it to make an income. Trust me. Trust me. I have a very wonderful job with my husband. Okay. So anyway, enough babbling. I just wanted to let you know that I'll always be there for you. Okay, guys, have a wonderful day. Live your best life and don't show any emotion when it comes to that, a nurse, that narcissist. Bye guys.